Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video continuing on with the Duna Colony. So the idea here that we are playing around with from the last video of the Duna Colony is that we needed a colony that was near the equator so that when we launch future missions into space we have a space station and or ship that's already in an equatorial orbit. Is that right? Equator? Equ Equatorial? Or, no. That way when we launch from orbit, we can pretty much go anywhere without really, 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 wow, talk. talk. Without really having to worry too much about orbital inclinations and all this other good crap. Because from the last launch site, or the very first colony, because of its location, getting into orbit was a little bit of a challenge, only because of the fact that we were in such an inclined orbit that it was kind of hard to go to places like Ike or even interplanetary one day. So to make things easier easier on us we're just gonna start launching from the equator does that make sense anyway so we ended up having to build a type of colony wagon that would go out there and build the colony all by itself but instead of, instead of doing it the old-fashioned way like we've been doing it in other words building a factory and then building little rovers and then painstakingly putting them all together instead of doing that why not just build everything in one spot you don't have to worry about sending out rovers or construction rovers none of that the colony literally sits there and starts to build upon itself bit by bit. This would definitely make gameplay a lot easier. So I went forth to figure out how to make this happen. And what I simply did was test and test and test and test over and over and over again until I got it to where the part that was being constructed would come out perfectly from the docking port that it was being built from. In simple construction, the mod that I'm using, there's no new parts. It simply just tacks on different abilities for different parts. It duplicates some, in order to have like the ore tanks. The ore tanks being able to use metal or rocket parts in order to build stuff. But the way it works is that the thing that's being built comes forth from a docking port, whether a small one, medium one, or a large one. So that being said, if you put them perfectly together to the point where when you build it from a docking port, it lines up perfectly with the docking port that it was built from, it would almost look like it was attached. Well, it is attached. The game sees it as attached, but you know what I mean. It looks like the docking ports are aligned and touching one another or docked to one another. So what this does is what it allows me to do is it allows me to build a building and then springing forth from that building, another one pops up next to it and another one pops up next to that and another one pops up next to that and this sprawling root system kind of colony building style technique kind of blossoms forth from the colony building wagon. I don't have to make a factory and then all the buildings come from that factory and then have a construction vehicle grab the building and move, maneuver it around the other side of the factory and attach it to the colony. No, none of that. None of that time consuming bullshit. Instead, everything is built all together, one building at a time, already set and secured in its spot. So this is going to actually be a really big time saver. But that being said, now that I can build colonies very quickly due to this new construction technique, te technique I started thinking, you know, lore wise, if there's a, if, <laughs> if there's actually any lore at all, it's just me playing a game. But anyway, some of you like lore, what can I say? But if we start building colonies at a drop of a hat, there's not going to be a whole lot of Kerbals to be able to populate those colonies. You're going to have more hardware than software. <laughs> software, get it? Never mind. A lot of hardware and nobody to operate it. So maybe in their desperation they start building AI? Robots? It doesn't have to be super intelligent AI, just AI that's really, 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 really good at doing one specific thing. Not an all-knowing, all-powerful AI that's gonna, you know, enslave Kerbal Kind. Just a really, really good AI that, you know, is, you know, the master at sweeping floors. Which, when we're talking about AI, I kind of like this idea of AI, but not all-knowing, all-powerful AI. You take AI and you basically just cut it into tiny little pieces. So you have an AI that drives really well. Or you have an AI that sweeps the floor really, really well. What? what? Really well. Or you have an AI that repairs systems very well. Super well. It doesn't know how to drive. It doesn't know how to sweep floors or clean or cook. It doesn't know how to give commands. It has no feelings or anything. Can't do any biological stuff like medicine or whatnot. But gosh damn it, if you got a broken light bulb, it can fix the shit out of that light bulb. It's also a good way from, you know keeping Kerbal Kind from being enslaved. The only time you ever have a problem
problem with AI is when it starts to have feelings. When you give it too much power, mental, mentally speaking. When you give it the ability to think and, and feel. The ability to do anything and everything. When you start going in that direction, well yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if artificial consciousness actually woke up. And then you got bros. But if you keep AI like segregated, modulated, modular, to very, very, very small specific things and then anything that has to deal with command and control is 100% Kerbal related in this case then Kerbal stay in charge not AI because you never build an AI that's capable of taking command or giving orders I think that'd be actually a smart thing to do I don't know what do you what, what does everybody what does everybody think about this subject I know AI can be a touchy subject sometimes a lot of people have their, their own their own ways of how it should go if it should go at all kind of curious to think what you guys want or what you guys think but anyway so yeah, it took, uh, I want to say about 30 minutes to build this entire colony. Very nice, by the way, compared to this. <laughs> How long did it take to build the first colony? We went from a ragtag colony camp from the colony ship, and then we started building the first colonies painstakingly one piece at a time. It took like a week, maybe two weeks. For this one, I, I popped out in 30 minutes. What is that? Like a 5,000% pr production increase? I don't know. It's fast, okay? It's, it's just fast. A little too fast. So for those of you who don't know, this colony is basically a spaceport. It's not meant to grow families and shit. It's got its own, you know, it can take care of itself, obviously. It's got its own, it'll, be, it'll have its own factory and food production. But it's mainly based by, you know, military personnel or whatever the case is. No families, no kids. 100% building rockets and sending them to space. All the family kids stuff is going to be for the other colony to deal with. The training and all that good stuff. So for the first couple of, couple of launches, there was some problems. I had to redesign the rockets a couple of times because of the fact that I forgot about the communications problem. So I kept on losing comms and then losing the rocket. But once all that was figured out, the thing that I was trying to build in orbit would be the Kerbal's first Duna shipyard. So I did put a post out there to name the colonies and stuff and the colony name that I liked was Plymouth now the reason for this is because I used used use I used to play what I used to play a game called Outpost 2 by Sierra and there were two colonies that or there were two factions that you could choose from one was called Eden and the other one was called Plymouth and as a young kid when I played this PC game I liked Plymouth because of the fact that the buildings look cool had this kind of earth color going on so I really liked the faction called Plymouth and when somebody brought that up I was like, ooh, boom, there it is. Plymouth, nice. Also happens to be the name of the second colony of the Americas. So that kind of worked. Now for the naming of the shipyard, someone came up with Freemark, which I thought was pretty cool. I was like, yeah, that, that worked. Freemark shipyards, sweet. So now the shipyard is christened Freemark. Freemark. No, <laughs> anyway. But there it is pretty much in a nutshell, the Plymouth spaceport. Oh, also you probably noticed one thing, the connection between the body of the colony and the launch sites or the launch pads is is crooked. I'm pretty sure that's because they're not attached via docking ports because I'm using simple construction. I'm, I want to go ahead and kind of decouple and recouple them. I'm afraid that the Kraken might come and destroy everything if I do that. So next time I do that, I'm just going to, you know, be prepared. We'll, we'll see. I might be able to fix it. We'll see. It, it looks a little weird but we'll see. But yes, anyway, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. Duna Colony. We finally have a spaceport and a shipyard, and I think the next thing I'm going to do is build a type of SSTO, which wouldn't be that hard. It'd be actually be closer to an SSRT. Well, it would be an SSRT, because there's no atmosphere whatsoever to build a typical air-breathing SSTO, obviously. So it would be an SSRT, and it would ferry goods and stuff up and down. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, here's the interesting part, of redesigning the launch pads again. I think this is like, this would be the third or fourth version of the launch pads but instead of a launch pad it would be a type of airport or not an airport but well it is it is the whole thing is a freaking speaking what? what freaking spaceport but basically i'm just going to make something that builds payloads right and then the ssrt you can load it up manually on the ssrt and then have it fly into space so the ssrt never is rebuilt it's, it just comes back it's loaded up and goes back into the space comes back blah 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 back and forth it might be a little difficult 
difficult, but it's worth a shot. We'll see. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. 20,000 subs. Don't think I didn't notice. Because of my job, I just, it's, uh, you know, it takes a while to put videos out and say, yay, thank you, everybody. Love you all. But 20,000 subs. Holy crap. Here's for 30,000. Raise your glasses. Cheers. I don't know how to toast. Anyway, okay, everybody, I got to get out of here for reals. Love you all. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you liked this video, please leave a like. Please. YouTube hateth the, the video that receiveth the least dislikeitists. And if you really, 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 really loved this video, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program. One of these days, I'll probably play something else, but we'll see. I also have a membership if you're interested. If you get the membership, you have a bunch of cool little emojis and stuff that you can choose from and, and have next to your name and badges and whatnot. Pretty cool. Check it out. Okay, but this time I'm go really going this time. <laughs> Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.